again, I know very, very little about this. So I was hoping you could enlighten me a little bit about uh, supplementation. I myself, you might have some whey protein, a little creatine or glutamine, uh, but I look at the list of things that you can't have in the NCAA. It's like, oh my gosh, I don't think I could eat my daily routine without accidentally ingesting something off of here. What kind of supplements uh, are, are things that you rely upon quite a, a bit in, in your regimens? And, uh, you know, how do you always make sure that you're on top of that, that, you're not, that someone isn't accidentally taking something that they shouldn't? You know, uh, we, we, any, we talk to the kids, we educate the kids, we also, uh, anything that they would ever uh, uh, determine to ingest on their own, we ask the kids to bring in to us and evaluate, we let us evaluate before they utilize to try and alleviate the risk of one, an NCAA violation, and two, an unhealthy situation. Uh, when we look at, at supplementation, you know, I don't really like to call it supplementation because we're not buying creatine or glutamine or any of those types of things. We try to use, you know, natural occurring products that we can utilize to help the body. Uh, I mean, post workout, you know, we'll, we'll do a number of things. We utilize, uh, you know, Gatorade to increase our glucose le glucose levels. Uh, we will provide them with a, a first step, which is a liquid multivitamin that's used in hospitals. Uh, we utilize uh, a, a B12, which is essentially just a, uh, uh, our body uses it to produce hemoglobin, which helps carry oxygen. Uh, basically, also, we, we utilize uh, uh, chocolate milk, which is a post-workout drink, which allows us to uh, give our body uh, casein and whey, two types of protein, uh, whey protein. Protein is absorbed more readily than casein is. Casein takes longer to get into the system. Uh, the combination of the two allows us to offset the deficit uh, of protein or, or uh, offset some of the uh, uh, the breakdown in protein post-workout for a long period of time. The glucose or the chocolate that's in there allows us to elevate glucose, which messes with the insulin levels and allows the protein to absorb more readily. Uh, and uh, and chocolate milk tastes pretty good, so that's that's why we try Agreed. to use it. Uh, outside of there, we utilize a, uh, a cherry farm, which is essentially... Uh, an energy replacement drink. It's just a f uh, natural, fresh squeezed uh, hard cherries, but it's also a, nat a, uh, a natural anti-inflammatory. Uh, after workout, you have an inflammation process, and we, we try to counteract that utilizing some cherry farm products, which are again more natural. Uh, and we'll use some high fiber uh, and high fruit and vegetable bars, uh, which uh, which we try to uh, give guys good nutrition with. And that's that's pretty much the gist of it. The key is when you put it in your body, how how much you put in your body, and and making sure that it gets in your body. Uh, to allow for that optimal recovery and, and, and uh, increased healing. Speaking of diet, what, what's the typical, would you say, like an off-season diet for a defensive lineman who's trying to pack on a little extra muscle? Well, what's a typical daily calorie intake and protein and so forth for someone like that? Well, that's all relevant to the to the athlete. Uh, we've got to look at a BMR or a metabolic rate for that athlete. We have to determine, uh, you know, how he functions versus how other people fun function. We have to look at the size we're looking to put on him. We have to look at uh, his ability to uh, uh, develop strength. There's a lot of factors in there, uh, whether he has high body fat now, if we need to take body fat off before we put muscle on. Uh, there's, a, there's a large evaluation process there. I mean, you may have some guys taking in five, 6,000 calories a day. You may have other guys in the – in the same position that are taken in three to four, depending upon what you're looking at for that athlete to make sure that that individual athlete reaches his or her optimal level. When it comes to weight training, it seems like, it seems like a lot of days, these days in the gym, at least you know, just regular commercial gyms, I don't see people doing deadlifts all that much. But it seems like that's one of the foundations of really your core strength. Are deadlifts a part of your focus uh, during weight training? And, and what about also squats and bench press? We'll do squats. Uh, obviously, uh, you know that slow twitch action is necessary because it's a, it's important to be able to come uh, overcome inertia or uh, gravitational pulls on the body and generate the force to to uh, accelerate the body into motion. Uh, so that's important. We'll also do the bench press, obviously, for strength in the upper body. Are they the key components to to the exercise? No, the whole system is the key component to exercise. Uh, the deadlifts. I like Romanian deadlifts. We don't do a lot of standard deadlifts because we power clean, which is going to start us from the floor in a similar position, but with more recruiting more fast twitch fibers we also squat which is going to recruit some of those slow twitch fibers and increase our uh our normal recruitment in our legs to develop pure strength uh so it's unnecessary for us to do that in our program it's not a bad exercise we just don't use it uh we do the romanian deadlift because it's more of a posterior loading aspect low back uh glutes and hamstrings to try and counterbalance some of the anterior aspects we do uh, we've got to ensure that the body stays balanced for it to be functional and explosive and and uh and healthy and safe so what we try to do is make sure anything anterior that we do, we develop posterior as well to keep that uh, homeostatic balance between the uh, anterior and posterior aspects of the body. So, uh, uh, but our, you know, deadlifts are, are definitely a great motion. Uh, Romanian deadlifts are the ones that we utilize. When you first came into town, there was a little bit of, well, 
it was a little bit more difficult than maybe some people were used to. Who were some of the players that really took to your new program, some of the ones that really sort of fit in there well and made a smooth transition? You know, they all had a great attitude. We really didn't have uh, anybody who was who was trying to to uh, to fight the system. We had a couple guys that you know decided that this type of workload and and these demands were weren't for them, and they, and they moved on. And that's okay because this type of workload isn't for everybody. It takes a committed, hardworking, disciplined person who wants to be as good as they can be to do it. And 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 uh, you know, if if this was easy, everybody in the country would do it. We wouldn't all be talking on the radio, uh, listening to somebody else playing the game. We'd we'd essentially be in here doing it if we had the capability capabilities to do it. Uh, and uh, these guys have those capabilities, but with that comes a, a, a vast payment. They've got to come in here and make sure they're committed to, to paying the price because it's painful. Uh, this experience is not easy. It's not something that, that uh, uh, the average person can just come in and go through and walk out of here well, walk out of here. Period. Really, uh, when you when you look at when you look at that as a training aspect, those demands are rigorous, and and these kids have paid that price and been committed to it. And and the guys that have stayed here, I didn't I didn't have any of them really buck the system. Nobody, everybody came in here and did the best they could. Now, physically, they weren't capable of doing what we wanted them to do. Uh, you know, they, they they weren't in this type of condition. They weren't this flexible. They weren't as fast. They weren't as explosive. And they all had to learn. They were doing movements they'd never done before. Uh, so education was a, was a large part of the process in the winter, developing through the summer dramatic changes came and, and as their bodies changed they even got more committed and more excited to what was happening because they saw towards what was happening they saw their bodies changing becoming more explosive faster stronger uh in every aspect of their lives changing they started to eat better because they wanted to be better in here they started to perform better uh, out there and they knew that was going to translate to football so uh as, as a group i couldn't ask for anything more i love every kid on this team and they've given me everything they have and uh, and uh, um uh, I have a lot of respect for them for that. All right. Well, you've had an opportunity to train some of the best college athletes in your career, so I, I presume you've started your book, yes? You're, uh... Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm writing a book or not. People have been asking me to write a book, and uh, uh, right now I, I, I kind of like the idea that we know what we're doing and no one else does. So, so I, I, I'm kind of of the opinion that if I, can, if I can benefit the University of Michigan's football team and, uh, and, and not let anybody else we play have any of those assets, I'm all about that. So it will be in your memoirs then, I suppose. Yes, sir. When, 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 I, when I'm in my coffin, they'll read the book. But I don't, I don't die easy, so don't plan on that too soon. And one last question for you. Now, as I mentioned, you get to train some of the best college athletes around, but they are college kids after all. And, you know, once in a while, college kids do what college kids do and go out and have a good time. And maybe someone has a little bit more of a good time than they should on a night before, say, a game or practice. Uh, I'm just curious, what sort of reward does that bring down from the strength and conditioning coach? Well, you know, uh, Coach Rodriguez decides uh, uh, what type of uh, uh, level of discipline is is uh, utilized for his, for his guys based upon uh, the situations or or uh, you know what he deems is necessary to handle that situation. Uh, me personally, I usually end up I'm not the judge of the jury; I'm just the executioner. So uh, they usually send them down, and I'm the executioner, and I make sure. Uh, my grandfather told me when I was young, you know, uh, that the punishment will always outweigh the crime. So it's pretty simple. If I make sure the punishment outweighs the crime, you won't commit the crime twice. So that's not a problem. We can do that and ensure that uh, you nor anyone else who visualizes or sees what happens to you will commit that same instance. Appreciate all your time you shared with us today. You've been most generous, and we certainly give you your best wishes for the upcoming season. Okay, buddy. Thank you. I appreciate you calling, and uh, best to you all.